series of tapes, Psychology vs. Theology, were recorded from classes given this year by the Supreme Grandmaster Dr. Malachi Z. York, known to us as Naya, Malachi Zadok El, our own Pharaoh, Amanubi Rakata. These tapes were released in part so that you may listen and learn the profound facts as taught by the man of this hour. And now, listen to the dynamic teachings of the Supreme Grandmaster Naya Malachi Zodak El. First thing to realize about the suicide is a very sad situation. That many people die because of fanaticism. And then it's also sad because of all the nations like ours, which they're going to try to direct. <laughs> if I was saying, what you're looking at is a group that they're giving you the impression just existed. And the government has known about that group since 1974, which is not a new group. The father, they have had uh, count, countless incidents over that period of time with family members trying to visit them and, you know, trying to get out and the government ignored it. And what happens is you have to understand that the way the government is set up now, that we have so many different organizations that are here to so-called enforce the law, that if an incident is reported, somebody is supposed to respond. That's the law. The FBI will tell you that I don't believe what people are saying, but I have to respond anyway, just in case something does happen that we have it on record that we did come out and check it out. Now, there's no way for this, and the leader and a couple of other guys have been castrated, mm -hmm. right, for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. If I was told that something's going on fanatical, the government must have known about. Yeah. Now, the Hellbach incident, we're talking about as recent as what, 19... <laughs> no, the Hellbach. Oh, right, right, 95. Hell and Bach are two men. Don't get the name of the comic mixed up. They're two men. Right now, they discovered this here comet. And when they zoomed in on the comet, what they saw was that there was a massive light behind it. They didn't know what it is. And when they did that, they opened the door for this fanaticism. So whenever you're looking at something in space, nowadays, after alien invasion, and Independence Day, and the Mars Chronicles, and all these UFO programs like Sighting and Oh, uh, X five. Once you once you say there's an object out there, and we don't know what it is, after you've already taught people that when we see an object flying and don't know what it is, it must be a UFO. And then what they made a point to do while they were talking about objects is they say it's not so much as to uh, the object, but who is flying the object. They drew everybody's attention next to the next form of encounter. What kind of beings or creatures or whatever is flying these crafts? You see what I mean? Yeah. Uh, this is subliminally being done to put something in your mind. Right. And what I would try to do is try to act the, 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 the ridiculousness by making points like a flying, when you say flying saucer, you're speaking of an aerodynamic craft. If the craft is aerodynamic, then what? Yeah. It is made here, it's terrestrial. There's no reason for an extraterrestrial being to come across the universe or interdimensionally and then use an aerodynamic craft. Whenever they show you Area 51 and they speak about the craft in Area 51, they never comply to what Bob Laser says that he saw a, uh, so a saucer, which comes from two saucers coming together. They say a ball of light. Which is, in, which is more in compliance with some intergalactical or interdimensional traveling energy moving from one side of the universe or one side of the state or dimension to the next. So when they start giving these aliens and they show this alien uh, movie recently and all the aliens come to Mars, they pretend they're nice guys, and then they shoot up everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they show you a craft that comes out the clouds, which of course we've all read the book of Exodus, when it's shown the visual and make an action about a cloud, we, can, we already have through the church stands in our minds about a semi belief in beings that are from beyond the stars. Now what the science is doing, and they started doing this about six months ago, and I don't know if you know this, but I did, is they started pushing this, what they call angel phenomenon. Yeah. Everybody's into angels now, when angels, been, even at the OJ case, they pointed out that they all had on angels, and they knew that that was one of the most widely watched cases in the country. 
You with me? They knew they were saying, now what would be, what would be an angel? Greek, of course, is Angelos, Ebu, Melek, or Malaika, in ancient Egypt, is Netanyahu, amongst the Hopi, is Sakina, amongst the Nigerian, is Shashuni. We always had names for beings that came from the star, or beyond the star. In ancient Egypt, Solstice was the star, uh, uh, what they call a serious star constellation, the Dogon tribe of beings. And so now, what would they be doing about planting this angelic belief other than to plan in your mind a group of beings that come from beyond the star? You with me? <laughs> Along with that, they planted in Switzerland a guy named Billy Myers. I'm not saying they put him there. <laughs> the thought, I mean, it's thought. And he spoke about a Platean group. So when the UFO thing hit, it didn't have room for racism. Because <laughs> everybody was worried about little grains. And he wasn't particularly worried about little grains getting jobs, driving buses, <laughs> or running the government. There was no racism involved in the first fear because everybody was a target. So what the racists of the world had to do is they had to introduce into it the Platians and say there's a North. And every time you hear the word North, you're hearing Europe. A Nordic race of superior beings, tall, blonde hair, blue eyes, who came from out the barrier. The problem, that entered into the racial problem. And then of course, the, this happened back in Hitler's time. Therefore, the Nubians started saying, well, no, they're not white, they must be. So the, 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 the original demons got their separation tactics going in, in a phenomena that they were planning so that they can justify what was referred to as black money. Black money was so they can get involved in high-tech projects without involving you because they had lost too many wars. And, and the tactics of going to Hiroshima and dropping a bomb just did not fit with people right. So they had to come to a more sophisticated method of winning wars. And that was working on time machines in the Philadelphia, uh, experimenting with disappearing uh, crafts or radar invasion in the uh, Philadelphia incident and then in the Monta project they did with time machines and you know, they started moving to another game, it became mental. So the government admits that they have people that deal with psychics, because they could show us that in the 70s and the 60s on television, how the Russians had people moving needles, and had Yuri Gali was bending spoons, and they were introducing the paranormal into our minds. That, that people have psychic powers, they can move metal and levitate things. So they opened the doors in the 60s, and every swarmy pit pit you can think of from India <laughs> came running into the United States, sitting in knots and humming, 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 and everybody dropping out of college and not going to the military and sitting around with swarmy this and swarmy this and swarmy this and all these guys, these poor Indians, are winning the emotions of the people on this transcendental meditation. So the government put together an organization that says that they do remote viewing. Simple word means we look at things at a distance. Very simple. And they said, so they found the best psychics in the country and put together a team of remote viewers. I'll get back to Hellbot, so you see what I'm saying. So now, once they introduced the Hellbot project, and they say behind is this massive thing that we don't know what it is, the first thing that goes to mind after all the grooming is, it's a UFO. Now, a man named Zachariah Sitchin, a Russian Jew, who was fluent in Kuni and many other languages, he called it Nibiru, because that's what was in the tablet of the Inuma Elish. Nibiru. Something that, it means, crosses the... Start, put, start work with me here, and start to put the pieces together. You know what you're saying? <laughs> All right. There in Zachariah Sitchin's Sitchin, Sitchin book, he tells you that these beings were the Nathanians of the Bible, Tanakh, the Torah, Genesis 6, that originally cloned the first humans on earth, Lulu, Amalu, Adam and Eve, you follow? And that they were going to leave and 3,600 years distance home and 3,600 distance back would be about 6,000 years. And they're coming back to do what? To get their children. Now, Christianity, in time, has interpreted this as the Muslims say the Mahdi is coming. The Jews say the Meshach or the Messiah is coming. The Buddha say Buddha is coming or Messiah is coming. And everybody now has gotten this thought planted in their mind to that's to expect some supernatural incident where some beings who were here a long time ago who created you and left 
and I'm coming back to get you. You understand? <laughs> so now back to Hellbop. So when the Hellbop incident comes, all the people that belong to the 60s that had made the, the hippie transition <laughs> was walking around saying peace and love and the whole world is in a beautiful uh, state because we're taking LSD and <laughs> everybody was smoking on cloud nine and listening to all these swamis about all of the transcendental meditation. These minds are right for the picket. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. They're right. So when the 60s spirit died, back in the 60s, some groups then started committing suicide. Yeah. Because they were disappointed. Yeah. So Jim Jones took a group of people and with the help of the government, who really did the execution, by the way, they eliminated those people and made it look like a perfect because they were having a cult war in this country. They started this thing called cult buses. The cult buses were really brought to the country out of Christian churches in order to get these swamis and these Muslims and all these fanatical Eastern religions out of here that did not sit straight with the American system that we live in. No, 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 no shirts and ties, no gray suits, no attaché cases, no more riding on the subway. You know, come on, no more eating meat, no more drinking alcohol, no more smoking drugs and about and no big money and all that. No big money in silk suits and us buying Italian loafers and alligator shoes and our pack of sweaters. There was a lot of money there. There was big money in processes and turns for whites and blacks. But don't fool yourself, Caucasians also turn their hair. So everybody does. There was money there. They followed, there was money in the transcendental thing. Right? Because they started selling them yeah, I always call those things, uh, Hattie Christian outfits and Hattie Christian, but the government couldn't get his hands on it because it fell under religious, separated from state. So they turned around and looked at the Christians and said, you people have to do something about these foreign invasions, aliens. What's the difference between an alien from another planet or an Indian who comes in without a green card who's also referred to as an alien? So on the book, Alien is Alien. You understand me? I just want to get this to you. You see, but that, this is one of the games they play every 10 years to try to stop the possibility of Earth people coming together and starting to respect each other as human beings. They have to keep this place set in a way with the past system. You follow that? Where certain people are kept low enough and their intelligence is exploited for fear of dominance. So they say the black Muslims preach black supremacy. But the KKK teaches racial separation. You know what I mean? The skinheads preach racial separation, but the evil Israelites preach black supremacy. Black are supreme. This, of course, stirs hate. Mm -hmm. He ain't no better than me. Mm -hmm. Me and you got his blood, his blood, skin, and skin. That's the game. Back to hell, <laughs> So, with the hell about situation, the first thing that's got into everybody's mind is UFO, behind hell mm -hmm. Now, they know that hell is going to be seen by anybody who wants to look up and see it. Mm -hmm. So, the hell itself will be a confirmation of the possibilities of anything else said about it. You understand what I mean? Make it more believable. When, let's say, Elijah Muhammad said there was a mother plane in the sky, built a long time ago by scientists, right? Now, hell about people there say, maybe that's the mothership. You see the game? The psychological thing. Now we got a whole upsurge of energy for those people who are looking for a thing. Now, the Christians can't get a part of this. <laughs> because their star has already come. <laughs> you follow that? So now we're with our next move. All of the leftover entities, all, all these new extraterrestrial groups, they showed you that group on Independence Day. Climb up to the top of the room <laughs> and wave the extraterrestrials, as they call them, come take us. And they did. They took off. <laughs> they shot them and killed all people. You know what I mean? So they introduced to you Hellbop. They make it public. They introduce to you simultaneously angels. There's a Christian revival. There's a religious surge. There's a cultural surge going on again from the 60s. 
and make the atmosphere right for fanatics to step in and do things like that. And then they know that, because when they do that, then they turn people call and say, what about your guys? Y'all wear black. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Everybody, everybody is a cult. Right. The word cult is short for cult. Everybody, the Pope is a cult. The Pope cult met this morning at sunrise, like the brother said, and had a sunrise visual for Easter. A sunrise visual. Christians went out and watched the sun come up for Easter. Now, if that ain't sun worship, cult worship, but he's a Pope, so he's good. <laughs> They're asking him, is he a, is he a cult? But they're afraid that somebody like you might know what that crowd is if it's a crowd. But they don't know. And then they put their remote viewers on it, and they're looking to keep a job. <laughs> so they start making up all kinds of, oh yes, yeah, the living entity, oh yes. Yeah. And even went as far as saying, it's coming here to get a certain group of people. Not only that, selected people and extra intelligent people. It makes that, that makes it real easy for me to want to be a part of it. Because it seems like it's addressing me. If I think I'm so intelligent, the game is. Because I said, this dear class is coming just for pretty people. <laughs> 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 Who's going to tell the ugly people now? <laughs> And these people are super intelligent people. That, that group surface. There's probably a thousand other groups standing on my love. Now, what is the relationship between suicide and rescue? None. There's no relationship between suicide and rescue. Let me tell you what I mean by that. If I tell you that I am coming to rescue you, then there's no reason for you to commit. <laughs> so now, you cannot convince me that the people who committed suicide really believed that these God-like aliens were coming to us. Because in that case, they would not be committing suicide. And you say, well, they, they were going to transport their body, uh, transport their soul, but leave their bodies, then why the extraterrestrials got to come? That's back to the That's back to the That's back to the who moved the stone story in the Bible. If Jesus was a resurrected spirit, then there's no reason to move the stone. But you can go through the stone. If someone moved the stone, it's because somebody wants to take somebody's body out of the tomb. And the stone, the stone was already moved before Mary and Magdalene got there. Then Jesus didn't resurrect that day to no stone. See, this is, this is the game. Some of them say it's a 2,000 year old game. It's a 1,400 year old game in Islam. The game is still there. Muhammad runs inside of a cave and a spider weaves a net for Muhammad. He's hiding behind the spider web from a bunch of men. But he's supposed to be a large messenger. And a large angel is supposed to come to help him. He says, Kingdom of Master Allah, he's not even. Surely the help of Allah is near. But Muhammad is hiding in a cave. From men. 1400 years, the same game is going on. Now what's happening? This is the age of Aquarius. This is the age of enlightenment, if not by no spooky crap, but by computer alone. Internet. International binding. Networking in business and finance. Men and women are sitting in their houses and making connections with companies in Japan and Korea without going through the from sea to shining sea. <laughs> without depending on planes transporting stuff and ships bringing stuff and bidding it to God. Mm -hmm. So what is going to happen to commerce in this country if internet continues? Mm -hmm. Children can get in their computers and educate themselves at Oh. So my daughter can sit in front of a computer, I've seen her do it, with her pajamas on. Yeah. What happens? Finances drop. Yeah. 
No school means no new sneakers. Because these kids are trained to go to school and trained to try to look nice in school and trained to try to look better than each other in school. So kids will say, I don't want to go to school because I don't have anything to wear. Commerce involved. Pencils. Pencils are disappearing. Where is the largest shipment of lead coming from? Here. All the lead in the slate is coming from, see, your country is broken up into four places. Get this in your mind. Northern part of this country, right, deals with industry, cars, Wall Street, your know, factories. Southern part of this country deals with farming, textile lift farming, because it's cotton, you know, sheep. The East Coast deals with imports, because everything was shipped. Read Revelation 18 if you don't read. And then on the West Coast, you're dealing with minerals. As you go westward, you're dealing with gold and the oil. And so the country has been strategically broken down into a compass of business. And the Civil War was fought because the people in the South would not do trade with the people in the North. And the people in the north were depending on the food from the farmers. And they had this farmer's war or confederate war less than 10 years ago. Where the government came in and gave loans to all the farmers. And then when they brought, when the farmers went out and bought new equipment and planted food, the government didn't buy it. The north didn't buy it. So it's industry again. UFO is industry. If all that grave or industry, they now making gray masses and gray t-shirts. Whenever you see t-shirts and graves all over them, there's money involved. And to make it real, they've got to have life and death. Life and death is real. Everybody recognizes those two principles. The fact that you're living and one day you'll die, or that someone you love was living and one day you'll die. So this death incident has woken up everybody to the UFO. It's not an accident. It's well planned. It's to make people come here and say, let me go on out there because I heard that he teaches about UFOs. Let me get high, okay? I heard that he teaches about UFOs and that the middle of the crap in the sky is coming to get them. And that People are joining this organization faster than any organization we have ever seen. They're not joining the organization because they like me. They're joining the organization because they have investigated the things I say. So the principles of this organization, the principles of my organization and your organization was don't believe me. Don't trust me. That's what all I need to see. Believe what I say. Don't believe me. So when we talked maybe four or five years before the incident of Hellbox, not calling it Hellbox, but Nibiru, nothing new, something recorded in the Enuma Elish that it would come back, NASA knows about it, called the planet X, got it on record. They've been recording it for the longest. But they know. They know of an ancient prophecy. The Mexicans had it recently. Their prophecy came true. And crafts were recorded for Mexico on film, and they cannot, the government cannot say these are other than metallic crafts. So they write them away, and they can't let Mexico merge, so they create a new problem with Mexico and drugs, close the gates down, block the propaganda, your undesirable and extraterrestrial information coming through from the ancient Almacs that the Mexicans are receiving, you won't get. <laughs> Women? Yeah. They know about the Dogon tribe. They've been knowing about the Dogon tribe before you did. And they know the Dogon tribe speak about a star called Cyrus, or the Sirius star sign, or Solstice as we call it. And it's at one of the points off of the belt of the three stars of Orion. Well, they were trying to relate the Dogon to the Orion star constellation of Egypt. Then they found out that the Dogon migrated from Egypt to Mali. 
You're right. And they found out that the spirit star was called Isis. And that the Orion Belt was the three pyramids of Khufu. And that the planet alignment takes place every 6,000 years. They know about the 26,000 year for the axis needle shift. They know about the equinox and the epoch, 50,000 years for the plus shift. They know about the seven inner planets lining up. Don't come out here and say, I wrote the book, 5-5-2000. Uh, I didn't write the book. But I seek out the men. Go slap hell about the side of head. <laughs> We're not controlling the propaganda. Because when you say stuff in a fanatical society, a liberal society like America, you got to be careful how you word things. Because there are crazy people here. And if you're a responsible leader, you must be careful what you say. Yes, we're an organization that recognizes the ancient ones. But we don't just say the ancient ones are coming from beyond the stars. We say the ancient ones are also beneath us. The all Max, the Mayans, the Aztecs, that's our people, the indigenous people of this land. The, the racial problem comes in with economics, right. creating separate markets, regardless of what the result is between human beings. If I can get all the white people to like one kind of music, and all the black people to like another kind of music, and all the red people to like another kind of music, Separate diet, I have created three separate markets. That's why I told y'all that they are going to change the music soon. That's why they're giving all the awards to people like Babyface and Tony Braxton, who don't, who's not wearing baggy clothes. Civil economics says if everybody is buying extra large clothes, then I'm losing money. Because if I, listen close. I'm not as crazy as I look. <laughs> if I can sell you, uh, what size shirt do you wear? Extra large. Extra large. What size shirt do you wear? Large. Large. So there's less fabric going into his shirt than in his shirt. Now if I can get somebody here with a medium, and then a small, you know what I'm saying? I can calculate mathematically the amount of yardage through my profits based on his extra large to his large to so-and-so medium, but charge all of them the same price. Right. 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 I charge the extra large price, but I save two or three yards of fabric as the sizes go down. So when the kids started buying all extra large clothes, thanks to um, Chris Cross, <laughs> oh boy, and then backwards pants really frightened them. <laughs> Because there's money in the metal in the zipper, and men, we men know plastic zippers don't work. They don't work. Men and women might not know. Yeah, y'all do too. Y'all be doing this. <laughs> it didn't work. The plastic zipper didn't work. So now to shift the fans now the possibility of taking that metal out that zipper, how much, I mean, billions of dollars would have been lost every year just by removing the zipper. See, so Muslims come in the country and they put on uh, jelly beans and pants and African clothes and tie them up in those zippers. And the metal industry is here. And they go, those, those Muslim guys in those clothes, there's no money in that. <laughs> what do Muslims use that got metal in it? So the, so, this may sound crazy, y'all, but we are talking about billions of dollars a year. And if you don't realize it's all based on money, but I'm talking commerce versus commercialism versus brainwashing versus subliminal seduction versus suicide. Which bring that stuff about. Didn't you know that everybody had on Nike? Yeah. <laughs> everybody committed suicide had on Nike. Premeditated suicide, premeditated suicide and we all go buy the most expensive shoe we can find? If you're going to go and commit suicide, you can buy four these from Walmart. On walk to Walmart. So they intended to commit suicide with $80-something dollar sneakers on. They pre-planned it. Someone stuck in a Nike commercial. <laughs> Someone saw an opportunity to stick in a Nike commercial. Why mention? Why even bother? So now in the division, we have, let's say in white music, right? They got 
Marshall guitars and they got <laughs> Marshall amplifiers, I'm sorry, and they got certain instruments that they play and their kids wear a certain kind of dress and they go to a certain kind of club and they do a certain type of dances and they move different than we do. No doubt about it, right? And now this is a, a market. Over here, there is a black market. Yeah. Over here is a Latino market. More grass section, more congelo, more a different type of dress, a different type of dancer. It's a separate market. I'm telling you, man, this is deep stuff they play. This is this, it's all this manipulation. What's happening now? Let me tell you what's happening. The age of awareness, awareness is lining up with the age of Aquarius. And people are becoming simple again. You know what I'm saying? People are saying, well, I don't eat that no more. Yeah. McDonald's and them ain't giving away toys because they're burgers or stuff. And my burgers don't, I ain't got to give you a toy. I'm giving you a bonus just like the bank and the car deal because I'm trying to lure you in because I'm not making the kind of money I used to. But people no longer believe in McDonald's. People are starting to get healthy. People are starting to charge. And we don't manufacture sneakers because we don't produce enough gum Arabic in this country so that it's coming from the Far East. Look at all the sneakers everybody got on. And where the sneakers ain't their shoes got rubber soles. Leather was one of our markets. Why? Because we had the cattle. But not sneakers. <coughs> you, you got to get the message? You understand the baggy, the baggy clothes syndrome? So they got to get baby face because he wears suits. They got to get Tony Braxton because she's wearing slim clothes. They even picked out Whitney Houston, dubbed her off, and she was gone. Cleaned her up and put her back in. They put, <laughs> oh yeah, that's how they work. They don't care. They brought, they brought Rod Stewart's butt back to him. He's about 100 years old. And Mick Jagger's about 150 years old. David Bowie's 250 years old. And they brought them back because they create a... They need y'all to get back into fitting clothes. They need y'all to get back into shoes. They need y'all to get back into jewelry and hair perms. They need y'all to get back to restaurants and evenings and going to the movies. Remember one time when videos came in, all the movie theaters were complaining because people were staying home and taking them. Yeah. Right now there's about 30 new comedies out. People are going out to the movies again. Going out to the movies means going back to restaurants. Going back to restaurants. <laughs> all economics. Crime is economics. Yeah. Why is crime economics? Because the police force represents economics. He got a wooden stick, rubber shoe, a leather belt, a cotton uniform, a steel gun, an iron buckle, a copper strap. <laughs> he is, he is, when you see him in a uniform, a policeman, not a uniform, next time, step back into this. <laughs> and look at, the, look at the amount of money that's on this one guy. He carries over 20 pounds to 20 to 50 pounds of weight and is expected to catch a young black boy running through the ghetto in secret. He has something for that too. No, he could not catch you, so what he did is wear the style where you untied your shoes and let down your pants so he could catch you. Well, when I was coming up, we didn't get caught. <laughs> if we got a chance to run, and how many people were in this 40s and 50s? Right, y'all know that. If we got a chance to run, it wasn't about catching us. If we got a chance to run in our neighborhood, it really wasn't about it. <laughs> These young boys, you see them every time you back up against the wall. <laughs> Why do you look? The pants are not here. <laughs> The market. TV controls the style. If they didn't want gangs, they wouldn't have that movie on um, color. We had gangs in the 52. We went down and hit each other with car arrows, garbage cans up, boom, call each other names, good back. It was all for the girls. It was like a gladiator thing. And somebody pulled out a nine millimeter. Everybody went, whoa. The girls were men for them. Nowadays, kids are shooting each other dead. They even taught them to hold a gun different to make it creative. Shoot sideways. <laughs> Elimination process. Because a population process. As Dr. Francis Wellstein says, read about her. An icy baby. Elimination process. 
Now we're at a point in time that they come in, it's like they, they can't stop drugs from coming in this country, right? Or better yet, Mexicans can't get in the country, but Arabs can get in here and blow stuff up. <laughs> Mexicans only got to cross the border, and Arabs got to cross the water. <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of people turning the and looking the other way. You know what I'm saying, Tommy? Go back to the hell box. Don't believe the hype. All that is a setup and it might even get worse. Why? Because of things like the waffle. And if you think, if you think for one minute, I'm teaching you that we're getting out of America to go to Africa. You don't belong here. <laughs> but I've traveled all over Africa. I've lived in Africa. I've studied in Africa. I'm an African. And most Africans are trying to get over here. <laughs> Let's not be no fools. It was a beautiful place. It was. But it's no more. Leadership. Power. Cool. That's like greed. Ego. Ego. What do you think is going on in Zaire right now? It's all over ego. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist here. But at least here they say, give me a portion of your money called tax. And I'll protect you. And stay in a certain guideline. And I'll protect you. This is nothing that they, this is not something that they volunteer to do. This is something that they have to do. Because you're the ancient one. And this is recorded right here in the government that they want to protect you. Because this is really your land. And they know it. I'm not going to go into that. That starts another whole chapter of our life. But again, it's a hell of a Don't come at us. So, do y'all know these guys? <laughs> I know I don't know these people. Are they just in the ghetto? I might have met them. <laughs> Are these people picked the richest neighborhood, the richest neighborhood in California to die in? I would have got stopped walking through that neighborhood. <laughs> they said, well, there's a couple of Negro people with them. Yeah, yeah that was your horrid brother from Star Trek, and he got money, he can walk through the neighborhood, but they go, well, you, 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 you're her brother. Go ahead. Who are you? I'm Dr. Melchizedek. You. you can't go to this neighborhood. Because you're going in there to steal. <laughs> this is a zoo. If you run through the streets of California, you will get arrested. <clears throat> so now, here we got, let's, let's, let's touch another subject there. Here we got a group of, let's say, what they say, 39 of them? Yeah. Let's just say it was only 39, it's hard to believe, right? Yeah. 39 people moved in one of the richest neighborhoods in California, all dressed in black, all wearing Nike. You can see the leader's marbles are scrambled just by his face. He almost looks exactly like DuPont. And you can see that his, there's someone who tore a hole in his marble bag and they fell out. You can see the man. You can see the man ain't all there. And now this group walked around an exclusive neighborhood and nobody knew nothing about it. And no investigation was done. Not even the neighborhood sheriff saw them as kind of. They said, well, uh, you know, they came to our restaurant just four days before they died. They all came in and they were so polite and they were nice and I never knew they were going to die. You ever think maybe they didn't need us? Because <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't wear the world. Listen, if I said to y'all, listen. <laughs>